No, I listen to it all the time. I tell all my friends to smack it wrong. Following podcast contains mature content. The views and opinions expressed by the host are not those of the host. Listener discretion is advised. Ladies and gentlemen, the number one wrestling podcast on Pornhub, the Smack and Raw podcast. I am your host, the quintessential stud muffin of podcasting, the patron state of podcasting, the warden Matt Ritter. I'm here with my co host this evening. She's the host of the She Lead Showcase, story time with Miss Katie Kinsey Bay Bay, inside the mind of, uh, not really in the crowd anymore, the. Loaded baked potato herself, Miss Katie Kinsey Bay Bay. Hey. And winner of last year's Pornhub Poppy Race, the Sultan of Spitter Swallow, Daddy Delgado, uh, my friend, despite the way the show started and the look on his face, Vince. What do you mean the winner of last year's race? The winner of the race, period. We're not doing I don't know. You were gone for two weeks, and Allison was in the chat calling Katie the real porn up poppy. So, <laughs> Katie also missed two weeks in the same and, span. They were just spaced out. And I mean, <laughs> King of the Ring is an annual thing. So, the porn up poppy <laughs> is it an annual thing? What was the last time we had a King of the Ring? Literally uh, last year. Yeah, last no. year. Not, not necessarily. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, not we absolutely had a King of the Ring last year and a Queen of the Ring, and Zelina won. Exactly. And Xavier Woods won. Anyway, happy May 19th. The race happened last year, so it is last year's race. Fair. Uh, a few more appearances from Will. He said it'll be a three-horse race. Mm -hmm. And uh, Allison is still back in her girl, Katie. That's fine. Sister I still sister. announced you as the Pornhub Poppy, just because I said last year's race. Like, that's when the race happened. Travis is correct. That is what I meant. Last year, we had a race, and you won. But then when you pushed it, I was like, we could do another race, Vince. You could win again. When when, when did I push it? You said, what do you mean last year's race? Kind of like. Oh, uh, the two of you today. Holy shit. My goodness gracious. What do you got for us for news and rumors, Katie? Oh, uh, in injuries. Uh, Liv is <laughs> more injured than expected. As in, they took the tag titles off of her and Raquel injured. So now there's going to be <clears throat> a fatal four-way tag match to determine new tag team champions. Raquel is going to have a mystery partner. Ronda and Shayna, Bailey and EO, and then Team Karen. I was going to save this for when we got into the show, but fuck it, we're here. Um, <laughs> Raquel Gonzalez got drafted to Raw, but she was on SmackDown tonight. The match for the Raw Women's Tag Team Championships is going to take place on Raw with women from SmackDown competing on Raw. Why the fuck did we do a brand split? Why the fuck did we do a draft? What was the fucking point? Because they're already not sticking to it. We're not even a month into this motherfucker, and they're already just doing whatever the fuck they want. You've got people from SmackDown competing for a Raw championship. Now you've got people from SmackDown competing on Raw for tag team titles. You know, I, I was going to let the Sammy and KO thing slide. I would have preferred if they had said, because they are the tag team champions, they can go between both shows. That That's something that you're supposed to state when you draft someone to a show, yeah. that while they're champions, they can travel. That It was not stated, but it, it has been in the past. So that part I was going to let slide, as long as the Usos and Roman stayed over there. And Paul Heyman shows up on raw now mind you i did say give me a kayfabe reason and he had a visitor's pass on his phone however if there is a brand split it should not be so easy as to just get a visitor's pass to show up on the show you're not supposed to be on because then there's really not a brand split 
However, Paul is not an in-ring talent. He was there scouting people for the match that that he is the wise man for, and what a, he, he was there scouting. He had a yeah. visitor's pass. I would have preferred that he bought a ticket and sat in front row and did his scouting that way is what it is. Also, if you have a visitor's pass, you should not be able to walk out on the rampway and be <laughs> in the fucking arena. You should have to stay in the back. How do they fuck it up two weeks into the goddamn brand split? Why are you surprised? I thought it would at least run like a, I don't know, through SummerSlam maybe. I thought maybe they could hold together through fucking SummerSlam. Bold of you to assume that. Well, like fuck you, Benny. <laughs> I feel like uh, I feel like from the from the jump, I think there were reports saying that uh, Triple H wasn't really a fan of the brand split. Or didn't really want to do a brand split. He just wanted to be able to like book whoever he wanted on whichever show. And I think it was more of a decision from like higher up saying, no, we got to do a brand split because it's what we do. It's a high rated show. We got to do a brand split. And Triple H is like, okay, well, I'll do a brand split, but I'll play loose and goose with the rules. It's more of a Vince thing that he likes the brand split, and then he like bends over backwards to appease the the networks in USA and Fox when they want certain wrestlers on their show. That is incorrect because that he was fucking up the brand split before they were ever on Fox. <laughs> He's been fucking up the brand split for years. Um. Okay, Benny, I'm gonna need. Uh, I'm I'm gonna quote my boy, uh, uh, Chameleonaire here. I'm gonna need you to do like Unc told you. Take two steps towards the door and walk the fuck out of my chat. <laughs> bye bye. Um, no, Travis, Paul Heyman, and the entire Bloodline is on SmackDown. He got a visitors pass and showed up on Raw to scout Sammy and KO, who were wrestling on Raw because there is a tag team match for the titles. At Night of Champions between Roman and Solo versus Sammy and KO. No, you don't. No, you don't. You wouldn't say dumb shit like that if you did. So that's what's going on. Um, yeah, no, Vince has been fucking up. Not not Vince Delgado. Uh, Vince Delgado does a great job with his draft and his brand splits. And I never hear after the draft has been made that Vince's wrestlers are showing up on Katie's shows. <laughs> Katie's wrestlers have never showed up on Raw's Ritter when it was a thing before Katie took it over. Didn't fucking happen. Our Vince, fucking fantastic. Vince McMahon, fucking asshole who doesn't know how to keep and do a proper brand split and never has. Yeah, no, it's just it's 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 just it's one of those things where it lasts for a few months, like back in when they did in 2016, it lasted for a few months there. But the only person jumping between shows was Heath Slater, and that was only because he wasn't employed. He was just trying to get a job. But once he was employed to SmackDown, he wasn't showing up on Raw anymore. So, but again, it only lasted for a few months, and then they started doing bullshit rules and different things, and they didn't stick to it. They did not. They 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 stuck to it up until they did the wild card rule bullshit. Exactly. Vince Which has to I don't find loopholes. Was... You can't let it happen. When did they start the wild card rule? Because I don't think it was right away. A few months afterwards, it might have been even like a year after. Yeah, and it's fucking bullshit. So don't do one. If you can't do it proper, don't do one. There's no point in fucking wasting my time and doing a draft if you're just going to let people show up wherever the fuck they want. Anyway, Katie, I'm sorry. Continue. There's more news and rumors. I just I was going to do that later, and then you brought it up. So I was like, fuck it. We're here. Well, I had to. They announced it. I, I didn't know the extent. I, I literally thought Liv was just going to be out for like a week. Uh, j- just kidding. She's going to be out for a while. I guess apparently same with Dakota because they announced that tonight. I didn't know Dakota was injured at all. She also got injured in the same match as Liv. Um, Jamie Hayter is also injured, but is cleared to wrestle a dub or nothing in next week. So I'm assuming it's not as severe as they're expecting or th- originally thought. Mm-hmm. Um, AW Collision was announced. Two hour show, Saturday nights. I don't remember what time. I think like six in the future, my time. June seventeenth. Uh, it's the first show. They haven't announced where it's going to be yet because all the CM Punk stuff and all of the 
rumor things about him possibly being on the show and then not being on the show and then Ace Steel possibly being there but like not being there because like he bit a person and like that's not okay so maybe we just like I wonder if Kenny ever got a rabies shot like we don't know what Ace Steel has I'm just saying so all of that <clears throat> but they did announce like Miro, Thunder Rosa Andrade House of Black uh Orange Cassidy, I think, is on the poster. All Basically, all the people Matt wanted on this fucking show <laughs> are going to be on the show, to our knowledge. And while you're stealing things from my spits and swallows, neither here nor there, I'm glad you brought that up because that reminds <laughs> me. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us and supporting the Smackin' It Raw podcast. Um, <clears throat> if you've been following me on Twitter, you know that I said I have a very special announcement to make. Um, and that announcement is that next week... I have a huge announcement uh, that I will be making for the Smack and Raw podcast. So please continue to support us and tune in next week uh, to hear what this enormous, immense announcement that's going to shake the foundation of the Smack and Raw podcast will be. I fucking hate you. I thought I was actually going to announce something. I didn't know what the fuck was going on. Me either. I'm like, did I do something? Did we do something? Are we I in timeout? <laughs> I know. That's why I was confused. I will fill you both in on what's going to happen after we go off air completely. Oh, wait, something's like legit happening? You're not just bullshitting? I will fill you in after the show. Oh, no. It's all I'm going to be fucking thinking about. You can't do this to me. End the stream now. We'll start it up again once <laughs> yeah, you tell fuck us. The, fuck the show. We don't got to do <laughs> uh, The day that that's announced is the day that Matt Ritter is not on this show anymore. So... <laughs> What else we got? Uh, I mean, the last... If, oh, just kidding. I have two things. Seth Rollins is going to be in the new Captain America movie as a villain. As Finn and I were saying yesterday, if he doesn't curb stomp somebody in this fucking movie, it's a travesty. Uh, Cena can hit an AA in a movie, rock into a rock bottom. I think it's only fair if Seth hits a curb stomp. Like, am I right? I agree. I think it should be while they're on a curb. Like, it should be a curb stomp on the curb. I, yeah. We've I mean, seen that point. in American History X. It's brutal. Exactly. Exactly. So I don't, know if they can, I don't know if they can do that in a DC or in a Marvel movie. It's, it's a DC movie. movie. It's a Marvel movie, isn't it? Oh yeah, yeah. Marvel movie. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Captain America. I was gonna say they could probably do it in a DC movie because they get dark in some of those movies. Like they Yeah. I guess I, mean, it, I guess if we went like rated R like Deadpool or Logan. I don't think they'd go yeah. rated R for Captain America. I want to. I want to rated R Captain America movie now. <laughs> okay, yeah. Bucky with it, reaching in someone's chest and ripping their heart out. No, oh, that's more Mortal Kombat style. That's, yeah, that's no, that's what I want. I want. I want yes. Bucky and the Falcon doing more. Bucky. And the Falcon doing Mortal Kombat fatalities to villains. There you go. Yeah, he got there. <laughs> go ahead, Katie. Uh, I mean, the last thing that I have is they announced it on Wednesday that superstar Billy Graham died at 79. Uh, I guess Ric Flair tweeted it and then they kind of just brief, like, brought it up on commentary during Dynamite during the False Count Anywhere match. And I was like, did a double take so I was like did they actually just like kind of casually drop that I mean I get it you kind of have to like do it and then continue doing your job I don't remember if they actually like fully said anything after the fact they probably didn't but yeah you know Matt, uh, Vince are muted that was actually one of my spits. I was actually gonna <laughs> you stole one of my spits I was gonna say I was like I'm a spit commentary just Casually announcing the passing of superstar Billy Graham during a match where Chris Jericho got pie faced or cum shotted, you know. I mean, they probably that, like that was just Adam Cole's him. mom. Stop. And he found out she had an OnlyFans. I really thought that tweet should have got way more love. I was hoping that was going to blow the fuck up. I'm I'm disappointed in how many people saw that and didn't like it. Fuck you all. Well, you got some reactions from them. 
I, yeah. We did all we could. We liked and retweeted it. And I appreciate that. It's just everyone else in the IWC that didn't support my tweet about, you know, Chris Jericho being a mom on OnlyFans and Adam Cole catching him while his face is covered in cum. Um, I thought it was hilarious. <laughs> no, it sucks about Superstar Billy Graham, though, uh, in all yeah. seriousness, uh, on multiple levels. A, you know, obviously condolences to him and his family. Um, also, not on my pool, so no points there. Um, Jesus, Hogan's still running around. Pool? Well, Hogan's still running around, so like. <laughs> you can take care of that. Yeah, I'm not touching that. Dude, I'm not even putting Benny's comments on the uh, – no, no. We're just going to ignore that he exists. I don't know what the sh- what he is on today, but – I don't know. I'm not feeling it. Did you, like, download everything that I hate to Benny so he could come in here and fuck with me? No, he like, genuinely just – He genuinely just fucks with uh, me and Jesus when we're playing WWE 2K. And he's, like, saying that uh, Hulk Hogan is Jesus' favorite wrestler. He okay. does, does that with JBL too, so like I don't, I think it's just a funny coincidence. That is a good point. That is a good point. Hogan was just a Billy Graham ripoff. Um, Vince, spit or swallow. Uh, I'm gonna start off with uh, AW Dynamite. I'm gonna go ahead and swallow the fact that um, the way they kicked off with Wardlow saying Christian come spit in my face was one of the most intriguing ways to cut a promo. Christian proceeds to get to the ring, and uh, we get an exchange back and forth where Christian almost spat in his face, and we set up a ladder match at double or nothing between Christian and Wardlow. And I'm going to just swallow that because they haven't done anything with Christian, really, since his feud with, like, Jungle Boy, and even that wasn't really anything to, like, seek your teeth into. So I'm interested. It's a big enough name, so this would be a big win for Wardlow when he does the <laughs> question. And, um, yeah, it's going to be a placeholder feud until they transition to Luchasaurus versus Wardlow for the title. So, yeah, I'm just swallowing Christian, getting some rub. And um, Wardlow wanted some of uh, Christian's spit rubbed on his face. So all good stuff. I'm on the opposite end of the spectrum there. Uh, because A, uh, it's the hot potato title, so I have no confidence that Wardlow is going to defeat Christian. B, uh, Luchasaurus is just Tyson Tomko, so I also have no face that Luchasaurus, or Faith, not face, uh, it was his face that got spit in, uh, Faith, that Luchasaurus is going to get a title shot in a match against Wardlow. Also, I agree, Wardlow looks significantly less daddy with short hair, was not feeling Christian's promo, um, or that whole thing. I'm, I'm not interested in Wardlow in a ladder match with Christian because a Christian's old as fuck and B I don't feel like Wardlow is the kind of guy that's going to benefit from uh, none of this is working for me outside of the fact that you are correct. And I will agree with this. If Wardlow does beat Christian, he will benefit from beating Christian because that is a big name to put under Wardlow's belt. He is one of the few guys in AEW in this situation that could benefit from beating a guy like Christian, but he has to beat Christian, and I don't have faith that he is going to beat Christian. Part of me thinks Christian is going to walk out with that title because AEW. Listen, I'm in the camp right now where I just kind of want to see the IWC burn and melt their brains off. So I would be down for Christian winning that title. Plus, Christian's in my top 10 wrestlers of all time, so I want him to get all the titles. Also, too, I'm in the camp where I want Roman and Solo to win those tag titles off of Sammy and Kevin Owens and just get four titles on Roman Reigns just for the shits and giggles to see the people melt and blow up and just have a fit. So that's where I'm at. I'm going to have to find, like, a layout where, like, I can put you in the corner when you <laughs> say things like that. Me? Yeah, you. Or Katie, uh, if she ever, you know, gets out of pocket. But, like, I need an out-of-pocket corner where I can just send a host away from us where your your window's smaller. I'll have to look in the layouts, see if we can do something like that. Kind of like, you know how Allison has the boss bitch corner? It'll be the timeout corner. <laughs> Since I can't just kick people from the call anymore like I used to on Zoom. He can just <laughs> add himself back, Travis. Like, I can remove him. He'll just bring himself back. Like, I can't stop him from doing it. It's not like Zoom. Yeah. So. um, I am going to spit the fact that the devil's thickest demon is back 
and they had her at Dynamite, and she had a match before the show, and she wasn't on Dynamite. And the fact that I mostly watched Rampage, and she wasn't on Rampage either. So what the fuck, AEW? Why is it that she is back? Why didn't she get to go into Tony's office and talk to Tony? Can we put her on Collision? I'd love to see Abaddon on Collision. That'd be fantastic, because I'm probably going to stop watching Dynamite and just watch Collision, and that's all I'll cover. If that's where all the people that I want to see wrestle are going to wrestle. So, yeah, let's put Abaddon on collision. But, yeah, no, her being back and not getting a TV match is a spit. I mean, I don't know. I don't know why you're surprised. There's there's only limited TV spots for women in AEW. And yeah, those are all true. filled. So. Katie Spitter Swallow. <laughs> um. I'm gonna swallow Nakamura going to win. I like the fact that they're actually like utilizing him, and mm-hmm. yeah, it's stuff with the Miz right now. But the Miz is one of those people that can work with basically everybody and do a good job of putting you over if need be. And Nakamura kind of needs that shine again. Like the crowds are starting to sing along again to his song, and they weren't for yeah, the longest time, which is just fucking disrespectful. Like the fact that they did, weren't for a while, but. Nakamura's kind of, you know, finally getting back on the good end here. So I'll swallow Nakamura getting a win. Yeah, yeah, I think you're right, Katie. I think this might have been the first week where they actually sang along to his song. And it might have just been because last week, too. They did. Uh, I Mm -hmm. I wasn't paying attention to last week, I guess. Um, But yeah, no, the match with with Nakamura and Miz was great. I thought it was fantastic. They actually got really good chemistry. And if you remember, when Nakamura got called up initially to the main roster on SmackDown, he interrupted the Miz with like the the whole violin entrance and everything, and they never did anything with it. They just kind of like he interrupted him, and then Miz just dipped, and then Shinsuke went into a feud with Dolph Ziggler. Like, and I'm glad they were actually like running that back because you know, I think they I think I think they work well. I think they work well. Um. No, I agree with both of you. Um, I had in there swallowing the match, obviously, but also this kind of felt like a return to form for Shinsuke. This is he felt like NXT Shinsuke in this match, and it's the first mm-hmm. time in a long time that I've I've seen that energy and everything out of him where it felt like that. So uh I'm all about it. I, I finished Halloween Havoc last night, Travis. Uh yeah, no, he was fucking nuts. Um Yeah, no, big swallow for Shinsuke, and hopefully. This isn't just the, like. Hopefully, they do something with it. Hopefully, it goes somewhere. More Gunther. Yeah. You know what? Yeah, we saw it already. We, I think we only got one match, right? But with like little to no build on SmackDown. I don't yeah. even remember. Probably. Yeah, that probably lets you know. Uh, you already brought it up in your uh, your news, so I'm just going to knock this out real quick. I'm going to swallow the fact, even though I know you hate her, that Ronda and Shayna took Raquel out. I'm going to spit the fact that Raquel showed up on SmackDown. I'm going to spit the fact that uh, Damage Control is going to be on Raw competing for the tag team titles when they're drafted to SmackDown and all the things that I've already complained about um, and obviously you know, Liz, Liv being injured. However, uh, swallowing the fact that they relinquished the titles because Liv was injured... Uh, spitting the fact that Raquel also just gets a new partner and gets another run at the title shots or at another title shot um, after she just relinquished them because that kind of seems counterintuitive. So pretty much spitting everything except for the fact that Raquel got her ass beat by Shayna and Ronda. I'm swallowing the fact that Ronda came, uh, Ronda came in and fell on her ass because she's fucking sucks. Karma, bitch. That's why you're going to be off TV even longer. Just saying. Yeah. You got anything, Vince? No, 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 no. no. You right. guys kind of touched on everything. You want me to touch on you? Would it make you smile? Uh, I think you're too far to touch on me right now. You'd I have mean, to I, like. It's only like a 45 minute drive. As soon as I get done, I can be there. All right, when well, you can't make, you don't make promises. You're not going to keep. Text me the also, address. He, he never actually like promised anything. He I, just. I said, actually just asked. No, I said. Would you want me to? You said I'm far away, and I said I could be there. Just text me the address. I never promised. However, if you text me the address, I'll make a promise. I'll send you the address then. All right. We'll bump up uh, these tonight. Benny wants a bear hug from Vince. Uh, Evil Knievel gear needs to go. 
Ronda literally can't do anything right. That is true. Sure. Uh, they just ignore the fact that she trashed WWE at every turn. Yeah. Uh, and Benny's already outside, Vince. So if you if you want to let him in uh, after <laughs> you spit or swallow. Okay, I'm gonna stay on dynamite, and I'm gonna swallow the women's tag match between the Outcast and uh, Sheeta and Britt Baker. It was pretty well done. Like they gave it, they gave it an ample amount of time. Um, and also just swallowing the fact that like Tony Storm and Ruby Soho and even Soraya out here in like fishnets, fishnets are like a weakness for me, especially Tony Storm. And then you know how like Ruby was doing her old gear where it's like it would be like like pants on one side and it'd be like the shorts on the other side. Well, there's shorts all around, but now she has only fishnets on the side where she'd have the pants. And it's like I really focus on the fishnets throughout this match. But the the in-ring action was fantastic too. I agree, I agree, I agree. Uh homegrown's lose the outcast. Uh Ruby looked like she got the hardest fuck of her life after that match, like she looked like half the girls in the pornos that I watch. Um, by the end of it, she could barely stand. And uh, also swallowing the fact that Tony challenged Jamie Hayter for the belt of double or nothing because I literally just got done bitching last week about how the belt's not you know, in the picture and not being utilized and it's just kind of sitting to the side. And here we are, Tony Storm, Jamie too. Fingers crossed, outcast get a title. So... I mean, it, depending on how injured Jamie is and they want to keep her out for a while, the best way to do it is put the title back on Tony. Yep. Wait, what is it, Allison saying? I need them to sell this tarot deck of, of the roster that Karen has? What, like what do you mean? The, the deck that Scarlet uses. To, right, right. But what does she mean, like, sell it? Like, like, like on WWE like shop. Sell, like, oh, the tarot card. okay, yeah. okay. I was a little confused. I was wondering. I thought she was trying to say like they need to get rid of that shtick or something. Um, I don't know. I think they might just go ahead and just put the title on Tony Storm because like even if Jamie Hader isn't that like injured, I think you should just take the safe approach here and just put the title on Tony. Um, yeah, because I don't want no more interim championship bullshit. And if that's if it this leads to. Uh, Jamie Hader retaining that double or nothing, and then like the following dynamite, Tony Khan has a special crazy announcement that shakes the foundation of the women's division, and that there's going to be an interim champion. I'm just, I'm just going to like tune out of dynamite for another three weeks, like I usually do. I want them to take my money and give it to me. Okay, sounds are a little talking, like are, aggressive. Are, are, are we talking about the tarot card deck or hookers? I'd I'd like to believe it's hookers. Hookers mentioned. I, I want them to take my money and give it to me. That sounds like a transaction with a hooker if I've ever heard one. Yeah, yeah. Sounds like transactions I've seen on San Andreas when I was playing GTA. Maybe Britt does turn on Jamie. <laughs> Allison says it's always hookers. See, there you go. See, Katie. There you go. While we're talking about hookers, spit or swallow, Katie. <laughs> Um, I'm going to swallow Becky's promo on Monday. I I like the fact that they're kind of building this in a way that Trish is obviously like been there, done that. I'm back to prove that I can still go. And Becky's like, nah, bitch, this is, you're done. I, I don't want to trust people anymore. She trusts too many people. Becky always gets her ass beat when she trusts people. I don't know. She's too trusting. As someone who's like that, I get it. She got Friends beat by Sasha. She got beat by Charlotte. She got beat by Bailey. She got beat Natty. by Trish. Natty. Trish. I said, yeah, I said Trish. Trish, Natty. It sounds about every single person she's trusted. She probably more Seth than. comes out to Kerm Stomps her. She trusted Lita. Well, Lita's currently out, so. True. She'll turn on her, too. Wow, rude. Um, I agree. Uh, Becky is doing it because she said it like 15 times in the span of two minutes uh, with an emphasis on the it. Um, but I, no, I love me some fired up Becky. She challenged Trish to a match tonight of champions and Trish probably could have, should have just kept her daughter's name the fuck out of this because now you're going to get your ass beat. Yeah, you don't yeah more, kids more, li- more than likely. Never bring someone's kids into it. Mm-mm. I'll take your word mm-hmm. for it. 
Um, I already spit Paul Heyman's visitors pass. So I'm going to spit the fact that Riddle still has a job in general. Um, you know, some things happen, some thing, you know, uh, Bandy Rose doesn't have a job. Um, I don't care what everyone else's side of it is. I personally feel like he just shouldn't have a job with WWE anymore. Yes, Katie. Um, apparently I don't actually know how true this is. Things I've been seeing on Twitter. Uh, it was not just pictures. Apparently there's also a gay porno involved with him as well going around. So I don't, again, I don't know to the extent I have. Not well, I know, I know anything. there was, I know there was video. I know that it was sent through Snapchat to someone. It was not like stolen from his phone, this or that, blah, blah, blah. Um, he willingly sent that out. Um, and they, uh, in my personal opinion, he shouldn't have a job. But uh, swallowing the fact that he didn't win the Battle Royal and Mustafa Ali did, uh, you know, so there was that. Yeah, that was going to be my next swallow when I went over to Raw. Was that there's a gay porno with Riddle and Lars Sullivan? No, that Mustafa Ali got the win and that she's getting a push. Granted, it's because it's in Saudi, most likely. And uh, they can't push Man's, uh, they can't push uh, Mansoor anymore into that spot because he's in a tag team that's not relevant at the moment. But I don't know. I, I, good for Ali. Good for Ali. I don't. I don't know where this is going to lead because I don't like this whole positivity gimmick he's got going on. No. Positive Ali. Yeah, okay. it's positive Ali. Terrible. And uh, I just think he needs to like just do something different. But like in ring wise, fantastic. Fantastic. You got that Cody Rhodes pop for winning a fucking rumble. That was crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Cause you don't expect it. You don't expect I, mean, it. I think everyone was just happy it wasn't riddle. That that's my take. I agree. Anyone could have won that rumble and got that pop as long anyone as anyone but riddle. riddle. Anyone. Unfortunately, I feel like I don't want to jinx it, but I feel like we might don't, go into a program don't. with it based on the Why happenings. Not if he gets fired. <laughs> Oh, he's not that's wrong. true. That's that's a true statement, actually. Fingers crossed. Uh, Vince, spit or swallow? I'm gonna swallow more AW Dynamite. I'm gonna I can, a. I cannot believe that you watched AW Dynamite, and B yeah. that you have been AW centric this whole show. Like two weeks go by, and all of a sudden you're like all in on AW. Well, we? it's not that I'm all in on AEW. It's just like it. Honestly, it just really depends on like if there's basketball on. If I already caught up with NXT and Raw, and I caught up with uh with Raw. Obviously, I watched that live. There was no basketball on on Monday, Tuesday. I skipped NXT, but I kind of caught up with most of it. So it just, I just, it was a good week. I was able to catch up with some of my wrestling. I was able to like watch AEW, and I just had it while I was at work all day today. So, yeah. So I'm gonna go back, and it's probably gonna be the thumbnail unless you change something. And we've already talked about it, but the false count anywhere match between Roderick Strong and Chris Jericho. I don't swallow a lot of Chris Jericho centric stuff, but I'm gonna swallow this match mostly because he got his ass whooped. He got he took like a puke cake, you know, like he took a cum shot. Uh, Roddy probably shouldn't have like put in his mouth whatever he put in Jericho's face because it looked like he just had like a bunch of like dried up cum around his uh, his mouth area, so that was not the best thing ever. But I liked how they were brawling out like the little, like platform area by the stairs. They were brawling by the fans. They went to the outside area. Adam Cole came out, Bebe, and he uh, they had their own little like secret uh, like plots. What's the word I'm looking for here? Scheme. They had a scheme. They schemed scheme? something. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Adam Cole was banned from the arena, so yeah. Roddy lured him outside where Adam Cole could whoop his ass. Yeah. He took it to the back of the head, and then Roddy got the win. So all around, good shit. He got blasted in the front and the back. He <laughs> took it everywhere. He did. Now, uh, I love watching... Uh, Chris Karenko get his ass whooped all over the arena. Um, really enjoyed that. So uh, more of that, please. Yeah, Literally yeah. not just dick in the dirt. Literally. No, I mean, that was the smartest thing you could have done to inc like still bring up the fact that, oh, yeah, Adam Cole was banned from the arena because Jericho's a little bitch. Bring that shit outside. 
That's why Rowdy said I want this shit false kind of they plotted. Genius. My boys know what they were doing. And I love shitty little boots, Roger Strong. So 10 out of 10. Yeah. Katie, spit or swallow. I'm going to swallow Re Ripley. <laughs> Who's right? <laughs> <laughs> Not I. Everything, everything Rhea does, great. She's beautiful. She's talented. She might still be the SmackDown Women's Champion on Raw, but I'm ignoring that because that's nothing I can control. That's all on management. Don't know what the fuck they're doing. Uh, and she, uh, she, her natty, I'm not really looking forward to, but that's like the only viable person realistically right now who could that they've built up let me specify because natty is natty and she called natty out said no you weren't really trying to save dana you were kind of just trying to get your shine back not wrong so why are you making that face at me because I can't ignore the things that you're ignoring, and I can't. I want nothing to do with the boat sinking Rhea's title reign down to the the bottom of the fucking ocean with her, um, like the Titanic that she is. I can't ignore the fact that the SmackDown Women's Champion is holding the SmackDown Championship on Raw, and they have not mentioned, done, or said anything to straighten it out. And I'm I hate the well, you know, trust this process and let it play out. If the if they don't have anything um two weeks into this, you know, after the first pay-per-view, no mention of what the plan is, where we're going, how we're getting there, then I can't trust the process. I can't be okay with the fact that she's the SmackDown women's champion on Raw. It doesn't make any fucking sense. I'm not, not disagreeing. That's it's and I'm not saying trust the process at all, because there no, is no you. process. It's just every I, exactly but like there's no process they don't plan things you have two sets of tag team champions on your main roster when you don't have enough women you have your women's champions on the opposite rosters because you're fucking stupid they don't plan this shit that's that's why they kind of just quickly did a draft and didn't think about the repercussions of it because they don't plan ahead because they're all fucking stupid I think they That's why did I just plan it. ahead. I think they did plan ahead, and I think the plan going into it was to pair her up with Natty because her first match was against Selena. Then they go against Natty. Look, I don't like Natty whatsoever, but WWE views her as the female Dolph Ziggler. Dolph Ziggler gets thrown into feuds that probably no one wants to see him in, anyways. It's it's one of those. She's gonna be here either at Night of Champions or some other pay per view, and then she's gonna move on to something more legit unfortunately all the, like uh, all the good ones that we want to see her in is either becky lynch which she's busy at the moment there's bianca belair she's on the opposite brand oscar on the opposite brand we didn't even get a follow-up with eo and they had that was probably like like the match of the night aside from like the street fight so i don't know i i'm gonna take a look at the roster right now to be honest with you and see if there is something here because I'm trying to blank as to who's on the Raw Women's roster. Kyle knows what's up. Knows. The dirt she has on Vixen account will keep her there forever, time unfortunately. Machine, man. Time travel. Um, you yeah, know, I just <clears throat> I'm not saying you, I'm just saying in general, I I, I can't <clears throat> let these things slide. Uh they eas- they didn't even have to do a weird belt exchange. Easily, <clears throat> if they knew they were gonna do a draft and they knew what they were doing, they could have presented both Bianca and Rhea with new championship belts. Per the brands, SmackDown's drafting these champions, so this champion will be here. Raw is getting the World Heavyweight title, so this champion will be here. Women's World Heavyweight Champion, whatever they wanted to do. Mm. They, there, there were plenty of viable, make sense options that they could have gone, and they have just chosen to say, literally at this point, what brand split? <laughs> Episode 294, what fucking brand split? Like, I know we can't put fucking in there because... I was gonna say episode two ninety four spit in my face. I'm I'm st- I, I thought that would be the title, especially if we go with the thumbnail yeah. that we're gonna go with. Yeah, it's not a bad one either. Um, because yeah. we're gonna be talking about more spitting 
in faces here in a second. Since we're on women's champions, <clears throat> I want to swallow um, the continued interactions between Asuka and Bianca Belair on SmackDown. Um, while Asuka did get a win, and I personally think that she should be a little more dominant, that she should have just ran through Zelina. Don't get me wrong. I love Zelina, Queen of the Ring, had a title shot. However, if we're building Asuka to be a really credible threat to Bianca, I need her to be out there. I need her to be evil. I need her to be violent. I need her to be dominant. I think she should have beat Zelina far more easily. I was looking for a different word, but yeah, that's Conv- that convincingly. Uh, uh, eh, easily, convincingly. She should have just whooped Zelina's ass and then put her in that hold, and Bianca had to come down. <laughs> However, I am enjoying the fact that. Uh, it is a new color of cum every week getting spit into Bianca's face. Last week was green. This week is blue. Can't wait to see what color get, she gets next week. So, Yeah, for sure. Okay. So, do you guys even care to know who's on the women's roster on Raw? Just to, like see who they can actually build up against Shayna. I mean, Zylee, Tegan Knox, Tamina. Yeah. So I, I, I'm going in alphabetical, reverse alphabetical. Zoe Stark, Zylee, Valhalla, Trish. Tegan Knox, Sonya Deville, mm-hmm. Shayna, uh, Rhonda, Raquel, Piper, Maxine Dupree, Natalia, Nikki Cross, Liv Morgan, who's injured, Kaden and Katana, Indy, Candice, Dana, Emma, Candice LeRae, Chelsea Green, and Becky Lynch. Yeah, there's they have to literally it, like build up someone because everyone else, it's like either in a tag team or they're doing something. In the tag or they could just have Piper Niven and her presence um, step to Rhea Ripley, and they could have gone that way. Yeah, it should sure be Piper we, Niven. Piper Niven should be the in NXT UK, but I yeah. don't 100 yeah. percent know. Like how many rivals. times? I think there were rivals in NXT UK for a while there, where or either turn Tony Storm. I can't remember if it was Rhea or Tony, but I know definitely Piper Niven was basically kind of like the Mark Henry of the women's division in NXT UK. So, I don't know. I just hope that after they're done with Natty now that they can move on to something else. I agree. This I mean, Indy was idea. just NXT Women's Champion. I know she's injured. So that's why she dropped the belt. But yeah. Candice LeRae also. Yeah. Emma. Build up Emma. She was in the first, like, she was in the finals to crown the first NXT Women's Champion against Paige. Zoe yeah. Stark is right there. There's yeah. potential. Nikki Cross. Piper and Alba did have some great matches. Katie, spit or swallow. Um, I'm gonna swallow. Where do I want to go? Nick is um, trying to find friends, Vince. Well, yeah, that too. Maybe she looks for a friend in Rhea, former tag team champion. They were champions. no, that they that no, we're not we're not touching that again. That was no. What super brutality? You you weren't a fan of super brutality? No, Nikki the superhero was. I'm not getting this. Um, I'm gonna swallow Diamond Mind and die. I don't know. I don't. The I don't know what the, the, what the diet, yeah, yeah them specifically for Julius Creed, like specifically for Diamond Mind in general. Like Ivy Nile putting the hold on Ava, like finally getting interaction between the two of them, which is something I've been like seriously needing uh julius creed and i don't remember which person in the diet hitting uh like 450s at the exact same time and it was beautiful and i love shit like that and now diamond mine is gonna go after gallus at battleground so can't go wrong yeah. supposed to be somebody else going against gallus at battleground well s- people are getting kidnapped matt i don't know what to tell you he wasn't well, kidnapped he, was he wasn't arrested. kidnapped he We're was gonna talk about it he was falsely accused of the criminal activities that he was suspected of. Basically. Um, without any, like... Basically kidnapping. I don't know about so, that. So the fact that I was supposed to get that, and I'm not, is a spit. However, I will swallow uh, the grizzled young veteran. The fact that I was supposed to get that, and I am not, is a spit. I don't... Again, I am not a give-it-to-me... Six months down the road, I'll get it eventually. You tell me that, that these guys walk in. You don't know that. I do you know that. No idea. These guys walk into the bar, ask for a title shot, get me all excited, and now it's somebody else getting the title shot. If you're going to do it, 
do it when you say you're going to do it. Like fucking Pokemon. Fuck you, Pokemon. I'm spitting Pokemon because they said I was going to get Pokemon home next fucking Wednesday. And less than 24 hours later, not only did they say, sorry, we uh, we put the Mudsdale before the cart or the cart before the Mudsdale. Uh, they also took away any announcement of what date we were going to get it. They just said, in the future, stay tuned. So I'm spitting Pokemon, <laughs> but that's neither here nor there. I Fuck thought me. it was already confirmed. Damn. Yeah, and the next day they recanted the shit. They took it. They said, oh, no, we fucked up. Sorry. That's funny. Yeah. I'm fucking pissed. Uh, I'm going to swallow GYV taking out Tantra Tyler and Wesley Lee. Um, I enjoyed the shit out of that. Kicked the shit out of them some more. And also, uh, Joe Wayne Gacy actually doing something I cared about and trying to drive a stake through the heart of those two because I don't like either of their characters or what they're doing and us getting a triple threat match. And I want to be honest with you. I kind of want to see Joe Wayne Gacy walk away with that title. Stop it. No, I'm 100% Stop serious. It. Fucking, I hate Tantra Tyler and the stupid gimmick he's doing. I cannot stand Wesley Lee. I, just not doing it for me. Belt Gacy. And his white van and his cult. It's not even a cult anymore. He doesn't even have a white van. Like He's lost all mystique and luster. It's still a it's still a cult. What do you mean it's not a cult anymore? He yes, went from is. Joe Wayne Gacy to just Joe Gacy. That's well, how this little brought him think. back to Joe Wayne Gacy. <laughs> no, I don't think he's not on there. Like no, I, I can't take. He's the literally a cult leader. He went from kidnapping people in white vans to cult leader. I mean, he not still does have a cult. cult they do leader. still wear the masks. Yeah. Not Sometimes that's a that's a cult. It's not a good cult leader because the diet wanted to leave WWE. How good of a cult leader could he be if he can't? They have until October. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Vince, better swallow. Um, spitting Joe Wayne Gacy as a cult leader. No, I'm just kidding. Um, (laughs) I'm gonna go back to Dynamite. My last uh, swallow from Dynamite. Um. Uh, Jungle Boy Jack Perry versus uh, Roosh. Fantastic match. They went back and forth. I was not really looking forward to the match because, like, I, I like Jungle Boy, but it's like, I like I like his song. I like the idea of Jungle Boy, but I don't really care for Jungle Boy matches. But as the match continuously progressed, I, I was more invested. So I hate that we just had a lot of really good wrestling this week. And I just appreciated it. So I'm just giving nods to everyone. And plus, you know, Rouge, Mexican. Shout out to all my Latinos. So, I mean, there are a lot of white people that I don't like. You don't have to like every Mexican just because you're Mexican, Vince. <laughs> yeah, but it's a different kind of situation. Of like, I, there's a lot of white people I can't stand that I don't root for. Like, Natalia and Riddle. Um, yeah, and I don't support Raquel Rodriguez, Alberto Del Rio, exactly, or Vicky that's Guerrero. what I'm saying. And, exactly. I'm not saying everyone. I'm just saying the, the ones I do claim. I will say, in my personal opinion, Big Time Rush is the least uh, interesting of the family of Dragon Ball Lee and Dramatic uh, and Big Time Rush. So, just El Toro Blanco is not doing it for me. Yeah, it's, it's kind of hard because he can cut promos, but he can't cut them in English, which is always going to be an issue. And uh, I don't know. They just they haven't like, really like hammer things down with him. Like, it wouldn't should... be an issue if you'd move into my house and just translate for me. <laughs> <laughs> it would be an issue because I wouldn't be watching Dynamite Live with you, because you'd be watching oh, no, it while you're at work. No, I, we'd watch it together. If I if I had you as a live-in translator, we'd watch it together. How about this? If after like after the forty-five minutes drive that you come over to my apartment, we'll rewatch Backlash in Spanish, and I'll translate all the stuff you didn't understand. That'd be fantastic. Yes. <laughs> Can we do that first? That'd be more like foreplay. Yeah. Well, I already got the candles lit. I'm I'm already set in the mood. What the fuck is going on here? My wife's asleep. Is is Melissa home? Uh, she's uh, laughing her butt off watching uh, my wife and kids in the in the bedroom, but okay. she'll probably be knocked out by then. Perfect. Yeah. This is fucking. You're both fucking terrible. I hope you both know this. <laughs> Katie, spit or swallow. I'm gonna spit the, fi- the fact that Dijak literally kidnap that's actual kidnapping Ilya Dragunov and <laughs> that just, was a torture that was police porn. brutality that was torture porn 
that was that was him playing a little too much into this cop character and just a lot of police brutality happening. Like he had the baton and everything. I, I mean, cool, we're getting the match, fun. But why the fuck did you have to kidnap this man and torture him? I don't get it. Question. Why did he get kidnapped? Question. Question. Didn't this start because uh, Dijak was cutting his promo and Ilya decided to like barge in in the middle of his promo? It's like, what are you doing here? And then he's like, he's like, oh, are you going to teach me a lesson? Teach me a lesson type of thing, right? It sounded very kinky. Then we come back to the next vignette and he's all, like in a corner on his knees. And it's like, I can take more, basically, is what he's saying. Like, I can, like, is that all you got? And Dijak over here just like slamming the bat on the table. And, which leads me to believe it was a consensual a- event because so, I- I- Ilya showed up by his own willing accord. Are you saying this was a thank you, sir? May I have another situation? I got thank you, sir. May I have another? Vibe also, a great Ilya. title for this episode. Thank, thank you, sir. You, may sir, I have may another? I- episode 294. <laughs> uh, write that down, Vince. <laughs> Sorry, Katie. What were you going to say? I don't, I don't even care anymore. <laughs> you do realize you're being groped by a skeleton, right? Yeah, I know. Okay, just making sure. Yeah, um, yeah I didn't want to make that. No, <laughs> that's all I kept thinking about. It looks like she's just getting. That that's. And, hey, listen. Sure. As long as it's consensual, it's all good. Kind of like this whole thank you, sir. May I have another situation? That um, Alien Dragonoff was kidnapped. He's no. hand. What the listen, fuck? Listen. Listen. I've been handcuffed and I've handcuffed. Does not mean that I was kidnapped nor I kidnapped. I'm just saying. And that is a great transition for a word from our sponsors. To spice things up in the bedroom, then it's time to check out Adam and Eve. Because you see, Adam and Eve is the leading adult toy store that offers a wide range of products to help you explore your sexual desires. Whether you're looking for something to use solo or with a partner, they have everything you need to satisfy your cravings. From vibrators to lingerie, bondage gear to lubricants, adamandeve.com has it all. And the best part, you can shop with confidence, knowing that all their products are of high quality and backed by 100% satisfaction guarantee. That means whether you bought a dildo, sex swing, penis ring, vibrator, anal sex toy, bondage toy, couples toy, lube, or accessory, you can get a refund within 90 days if you're not 100% satisfied. No questions asked. And right now, as a special offer to our listeners, Adam and Eve is giving you 50% off almost any item on their website. That's right, 50% off. And if you act now, you'll also get free shipping. So go to adamandeve.creationworld.com and use the offer code erotica at checkout. That's erotica at adamandeve.creationworld.com for 50% off almost any item and free shipping. Don't wait. This offer won't last very long. The link is in the description. Attention dog lovers. Are you looking for high quality products to spoil your furry friend? Then you need to check out dog.com. Because you see dog.com is the go-to online store for all your dog related needs. They offer a huge selection of dog food, treats, beds, and more. Plus, they have products for all types of dogs, from puppies to seniors and everything in between. And the best part, you can shop with confidence knowing that all their products are made with your dog's health and happiness in mind. Dog.com only stocks top rated brands that you can trust, so you can rest easy knowing your dog is getting the best. And right now, as a special offer to our listeners, Dog.com is doing a big warehouse clearance sale. And all you have to do is go to dog.creationworld.com. You can get up to 80% off on all sorts of items like toys, treats, bones, harnesses, bowls, leashes, and anything else you can think of. So go to dog.creationworld.com and take advantage of this sale right now. Spoil your furry friend with the best products from dog.creationworld.com today. Link is in the description. Are you tired of feeling sluggish and unfocused throughout the day? Then it's time to try Dubby, the ultimate energy source. Dubby is a powerful clean energy drink that is designed to help you stay alert and focused no matter what life throws your way. 
Whether you're a student, a busy professional, an athlete, or especially a gamer, Dubby can give you the boost you need to take on the day or the night. It also contains important aminos and vitamins that canned energy drinks simply don't have. And the best part, Dubby is made with high quality ingredients and is completely sugar free, maltodextrin free, and is keto friendly. So you can enjoy the energy boost without any of the crash jitters or angst that comes with traditional energy drinks. Simply mix Dubby with water and you'll have a delicious, refreshing energy drink that can help you power through your entire day. And with a variety of flavors to choose from, including Galaxy Grenade, Beach and Peach, and Dragonade, you're sure to find one that you love. So go to w.creationworld.com and order your Dubby today. And for a limited time, use code CREATIA at checkout to get 10% off your order. That's Creatia at w.creationworld.com for 10% off. Try W today and feel the difference. The link is in the description. So Will said we went from fighting to planning a late night booty call. And that's just the reality of our toxic relationship, Will. Like uh it's it's kind of foreplay. We 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 get a little uh we get a little rowdy, we get argued, we get worked up, and then uh, we, we work all that uh frustration out. That's just what it is. I think Will's jealous. I don't think Will likes seeing us flirt because he feels left out. I think that's what's going on. Just like the, I mean, the fact that there's not a threesome happening between the three of you, and I don't know what's going on. Well, Will's in Tennessee. It's kind of I, I can drive 45 minutes to Vince's house once he texts me the address. Will's got a much longer drive. And he's a passenger princess. So then Allison's got to take time off work to bring him up here. For <laughs> like, that's true. Uh, very true. Very true. And then caught pretty cows just in the corner, just like sticking his like thighs, just Using like his tears for lube as he masturbates. Yeah, he's just like sticking his thigh and calves just like everywhere while he watches us. Listen, pretty Kyle's got this whole thing going on with Kenny from Kenny for Your Thought, where you know, pretty Kyle pretends to be a stepdad, and it, it's a <laughs> whole thing. Um, <laughs> well done. Since we didn't talk about it, uh, speaking of you know people's prides getting hurt, uh, I'm swallowing the Cody Rhodes promo uh, and the fact that he told Brock, "Hey, my dick's bigger than yours, and that's why you're mad at me." Um, yeah. He did say Brock's dick is bigger than 99.9 percent of WWE, but not Cody's. Cody's that point one percent, and it's that's in Brock's 1%. nature to hunt, huh? Yeah. Top one percent, top one percent on OnlyFans, um, and then accepts Brock's challenge at Night of Champions because, of course. <laughs> if you like it i can keep going um jesus let me know if you're into it um yeah no so cody's promo uh my dick's bigger than yours and that's why you're mad at me i mean that's it that's literally like those are that the was like words word said. for word yeah exactly that was just what I, to say. I do my best yeah yeah I, i'm with you uh cody's good on the mic He's really good at like uh, promoting the match. Hence the my dick is bigger than yours promo, you know. Mm-hmm. So not really looking forward to round two between Brock versus Cody, but you know it's happening. So <laughs> sure. Has an average dick, but huge balls. Well then me and Brock have something in common. Uh Vince, bitter swallow. Um gonna... You're gonna find out how big they are later, Vince. Don't worry. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm going to switch on over to NXT and I'm going to swallow the fact that both the people that I wanted to advance in the women's title tournament advance in Cora Jade and Roxanne Perez makes me wonder who's going to win next week between Roxanne and Tiffany, but I'm kind of like leaning towards Cora versus Roxanne in the finals with maybe Cora getting the win at the end. Because as much as everyone likes to believe that Tiffany is going to get this win, I don't believe they'll do Tiffany versus Cora heel versus heel in the in the title picture in the in the finals, and I don't also believe they'll give it to Kira Valkyria or whatever her name is. I forget her Lyra name. Valkyria. How you put some respect on her name? I don't care enough to rem- I, well, when I care, I'll remember women. her name. I just swallowed the fact that two women advance and that I want a third woman to advance, but I don't see it happening. Hey, I just man. don't I just don't care enough about uh Lyra Valkyria or whatever her name is. But yeah, I don't think she's gonna advance and beat Cora Jade. Cora Jade is gonna get that win and she's gonna go into the finals and I just don't see Tiffany versus Cora Jade. But I'm just swallowing the fact that we 
we got a really good match between Roxanne and JC Jane. And I'm just really glad that Cora J got her win because uh, I'm not a fan of Fallon Henley. I don't know why she's fantastic. Um, however, one thing that you did say that's very important and could also be the title of this episode, especially with the thumbnail, Roxanne Perez wins. You know what that means, ladies and gentlemen? Mm-hmm. Got Those our rocks me. off. There it is. Got our rocks off. Uh, yes. Hashtag we got our rocks off. Also, G- um, GG coming out and beating the shit out of JC after the fact. Yep. Always love that. Um, and yeah, Cora getting the win, uh, defeating Fallon. Uh, Vince is racist against the Irish. Lyra, Sheamus. Uh, he did turn around on Sheamus, though. I like Sheamus. I like Finn. Now. 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 I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. Well, there is video proof. No, there isn't. There was, there was a disrespectful point in time where I have Mr. no idea what you're talking about. Where, you have where zero Mr. Proof. Banger after banger after banger was, was quote not on unquote Vince's radar. made it best. I don't know what you're talking about. These sound like accusations that were th- that were thrown my way, similar to Tony D'Angelo was throwing false accusations while he was just no, these, trying to enjoy his dinner. These are legit things. I I don't I don't since see you brought it up, Vince. I am spitting the fact that the police are fucking with the family. Fuck the police, <laughs> and ruin my tag team title match that I was supposed to get. That Katie's like, it's gonna happen. It's not happening when wow. I want it to happen. So it's a spit. Just saying. Kind of like Pokemon Home is coming, but it's not coming when they said it was coming, and it's a spit. Trust me, Katie. Hi, I see you back there. Um. <coughs> When you expect someone to come and they don't come for you, it's never a good thing. No one ever enjoys that. So now what would you want? I mean, nope, never mind. Not not going to say a damn thing. Not going to say what? No. Mm-mm, mm-mm. Not doing it. I, I completely missed it. I was writing down. Like, I just wanted to make sure. Lesson. <laughs> oh, huh. look, Justin's here. <laughs> uh-huh. I hope your internet's better watching the show than it is being a part of it, Justin. I love you. Um. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. Uh. Them fucking with the family. The cops coming in, taking Tony out of the restaurant. Poor Stax just wants to go. You know, take a piss. Comes back and his boss yeah, is you gone. A, you got a phone call about the docs. Uh, yeah. He whatever. he got a call. He got a call. Take a piss. Walked out. Um. Probably did both at the same time. <laughs> Could have. Probably. Comes back. Don's gone. And yeah, we don't get our tag team match now. I got to deal with fucking that. So. I had my romance what? novel all ready to go, and they took it from me. <laughs> the fact, listen, I love the romance novels. Was that? Oh, wh- where were we talking? We were talking about that on the show last week. Yeah, no, that, we we were talking literally about how excited I was for the Italian, <laughs> the whole deal, and the romance novels that I've been reading, and how this <laughs> all played into it. And then they took it away. You're like, oh, it'll come back. I know. I couldn't remember if it was like on the show or like after the fact. Where is it, Vince? What? Where's what? I'm in control here. (laughs) And you're going to give me what I want. (laughs) Uh, No, we got rid of the, the other one. What? Last time I tried to play a soundbite, it ran the loop. And it, every time I try and do the say what, it runs the loop. And that time it didn't run the loop. So I was. You know why it didn't run the loop? Because you shut it off. Because I, yeah, I unchecked the loop check mark. I appreciate that. Yeah. Oh yeah. my God. Yeah. Uh, Katie, spit a swallow. I'm going to swallow Trick and Mellow getting a win. And then Braun being. Uh, Braun just being Braun and showing at the barbershop like that's no no you, you're not allowed that's that's home turf that's that's a line he crossed it but Mello didn't fully get cooked this week like he has with trying to do springboards and getting fucking speared so that was a plus what he didn't get his booty broken this week no, <laughs> he did not get his booty broken this week. Um, He's also apparently taken, so like, that's a thing on Twitter too. Wait, who is? Mellow. 
Oh, I thought you were talking about his booty. Um, Same thing. Uh, no, I thought you were talking about Bronze booty. Because well, Bronze well, that's with taken. that's with yeah, that's with Cora. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, to be fair, I just I don't care about Bronze Breaker still, even with this heel turn. And I thought like the whole like him at the barbershop thing, where it's like him intimidating everyone. I'm like, there was like at least two or three guys that were just as big, if not bigger, than Braun. Like height and mass wise, they could have all just jumped him while he was sitting in that chair. Like, come on, like, don't don't let that one man intimidate the group of y'all. It was it was like six. That's, or six. Hey, listen, that's Scott Steiner's nephew. Scott Steiner's so, crazy. Just throw math his way; he won't be able to figure it out. It's true. It's true. Speaking yeah. of which, uh, neither could Katie, Will, or Bakley if you throw math their way. Shout out to the that Box was, Cuts that was, Shots Trivia that was, Night. That was bad. That was bad. I, listen. Katie I stayed got here. it. Props to Katie. Finger snaps to Katie. If it makes you, you feel it. any better, every single person that I asked uh, at my workplace the next day to answer that question also mathed it wrong and got it wrong, and I just feel smarter than everybody. So Wait, which way? Because there were two math questions which one uh, are the one about? the one where the seconds went. one yes yes that oh one. yeah i didn't i didn't even try with that one i said i don't i don't even want to play those how ones. many seconds are in two and a half hours and everyone fucked it up no, i didn't fuck it up i just chose to ignore it you did not answer correctly i did not answer period and every you did, which is not a correct answer yes refusing to answer is still a wrong answer katie no yes <laughs> no did you get a point Nobody got no. Okay. <laughs> no. Um, I'm spitting whatever the fuck is going on with prehistoric Paul. Dude, like, what even is happening? What is that whole baby picture shit? Is that a baby picture where he's trying to get to the bottom of it? Yeah. Dude, I, I don't guess. know what it is, but this is fucking stupid, and I hate it. And uh, no. I don't get it. I don't. Are they trying to make me care about? Producer Paul, because like I'm not I don't. going to. Yeah, no. Ow. He's been on Raw. He's been on SmackDown. He's been on NXT, and I still don't care. Well, it's because he's a free agent, so he's technically allowed to be. Yeah, no, still don't care. I'm just saying I'm that too. I'm just uh, Vince, that. spit or swallow. Uh, I'm going to go back to NXT, and I don't care what you guys th- say about it. And I know Justin slightly disagrees because he was saying that he's he feels like this is starting to lose a little steam. But I'm swallowing Thea Hill versus Kiana James, and especially loved everything Chase U because uh, Thea's over here just hyped up, like watching wrestling, and then Kiana over here butting in, being the little bully, trying to like be a jerk and try to like, burst her bubble. And then she gets all hopped up in her face, and it's like, oh, well, you got eliminated from the tournament. I'm going to show you why I could have been in there by beating you. And then she asks for permission, and then then Duke Cousins like, yeah, sure, whatever, do whatever you want. And then later on, she's hyped up for her match ready to go, and then Duke's like, wait, what match? It was like, the match against uh, Kiana you told me I can have. It's like, I said that? Oh, of course I said that. Let's go. Let's hype up. And the entire match, this dude's out here grading papers. Fucking love it. Big Duke energy over there. And the match was great. Thea looked great in the match. So swallowing swallowing everything Chase U, specifically Thea Hale's performance. NXT used to be good. (laughs) I used to enjoy it. I used to like to tune in. Now I only tune in for Carmelo Hayes and the women's singles division main event picture with the women that I like. You give me Chase U, you give me prehistoric Paul. Like I tune in for the family, but you know, so whatever's going on with that. So you're Most, saying that NXT now has become TNA where it's really mostly about the women's division? Essentially, yeah. <laughs> well, there you go. But not this part of the women's division because the Chase U sit is dumb as fuck and I can't stand it. And I wish they'd go away. But I'm happy that you enjoy it, Vince. There's something out there for everybody, and this is for you. So, remember when it was um, for us? <laughs> I remember when it was for us. I remember what was. I remember what it was for all of us when we all could sit down and enjoy an entire episode of NXT and get excited for the next week. We could just skip NXT. 
We can cut it off from the programming. You don't have to watch it. I mean, I I, I want to watch for Gigi and Cora and JC and Lyra. And you can still Tiffany watch it. No one's stopping you from watching it. You just don't have to cover it. If I watch it, I'm going to cover it. I'm not watching. I'm not going to cover something that, I, or I'm not going to watch something and not cover it. That's the whole point hey. of why I watch it. He got there eventually. Um, on this way. I'm going to swallow the BCC stalking and wrecking the Bucks, stalking and wrecking Kenny Omega. Um, you know, Kenny goes after Don Callis during his interview. BCC comes in, fucks him up. Mox tells him to stay down. Uh, but a beat up Bucks comes out with some toys that they got from adamandeve.com. Uh, and so does one eyed hangman Adam Page with his eye patch. Dead eye hangman Arr. Uh, comes on out. The elite go to town on the BCC with weapons. Hangman makes up with his friends, and we get anarchy in the arena announced. Now, uh, I only give a fuck about one fourth of the elite. Yeah. However, when Hangman said we are the elite, it made me you, smile. You know, you you know, you like kind of feel I it love deep me down. Some hangman. Like I, I, I wish he had better friends, but I love me some Hangman. <laughs> hey, we all uh, have good friends. I also really enjoyed watching the three fourths of the elite that I don't give a fuck about getting their ass handed to them before Hangman showed up. I did like that the Bucks just kind of tossed their luggage at the BCC when they saw them in the backstage area. They had to do that something. They that shit was fucking somehow. hilarious. <laughs> Poor, was fucking listen, hilarious. Ute's got his ass beat on Wednesday. You would have got a lot of the <laughs> aggression. He got a suitcase to the face. He got Captain Canada's fucking trash can shield to the skull. Poor Utes. Uh, I am, however, going to spit the fact that uh, Savannah spent so much time talking about BT on the Sheely Showcase. So. It's because I asked a question. I'm sorry. Yeah, you fucked up. You fucked up. You fucked you up. You fucked up. You, you fucked, fucked up. up. You... Okay, next. She's not having it. <laughs> yeah, shut the fuck I up. Just, I just, I wanted to spit Savannah, and you're the one that took took the credit for it so um yeah that that stuff happening i love hangman in his brown leather eye patch he's uh, right. that was kind of bothering me i don't know why well he's gotta stand out there's been a lot of eye patches in aw we have to stand out somehow true. that that is true that is true. an think eyeless about, about patch eye patch kind of like a assless chap don't but like eyeless even eye patch start. It could be a thing. It's the hangman literally starts. not a thing. Do you it have can, assless chaps, Vince? Say what? Do you have assless chaps? Not for you. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Katie, spit or swallow. Jesus. Um, I'm spitting the fact that. Jay Lethal and Jeff Jarrett are not only in the uh, tag team division at all, the fact that they're getting a title shot, and then uh, of all people, Karen fucking Jarrett shows up on Wednesday. Why? Why are we involving Karen in this? I don't She's understand. Yeah, she the fans kind of in involved things. her. Yeah. Did they? Yeah, they were tweeting shit about her and saying shit and kind of provoked the whole thing. That was uh, with the acclaimed, not FDR. Just her showing up. It was inevitable. Yeah, that's some point. Jeff Jarrett there. I want her here. I, want, I, I don't want any of them there. Listen, I didn't like Jeff Jarrett in 1997 WCW. I don't like Jeff Jarrett in 2023 TNA. However... The fact that Jeff Jerry got fucked up by FTR was a swallow for me. And I just I just want to read you the notes that I took for the scene that Kate, Katie described. Uh, Karen touches FTR's balls, and then Satnam Singh comes in to choke them really hard before Lethal and Jarrett finish them off with toys. One of my favorite things I saw on Twitter was just the clip of FTR running out and like pushing Satnam Singh into the table and they're like they murdered Satnam Singh like out of fucking nowhere <laughs> the context fucking oh Twitter as much as it sucks every once in a while you, get, you find a nice little gem and it's 
perfect. I agree. Vince, better swallow. I am going to spit the whole Nova Sessions thing that they had on NXT with um, what's his face? Uh, Noam, Noam Dar? No, I'm dark. Yeah. Super Nova yeah. Sessions. God damn, I forgot the man's name. But yeah, he came out and then he was doing something with Dragon Lee. I just kind of fast forward with it. Like after a few minutes, I just couldn't fucking deal with it. Why the fuck does he have a talk show? Then he's over here walking around like a like a jackass with a fucking cradling his trophy. Like imagine if Bobby Lashley walked around with his Andre the Giant trophy and was just cradling it backstage. Like I don't, I don't, I don't care about Nam Dar. He just, he's, he's annoying. He gives me kind of like weirdo, weirdo, weirdo per vibes, and I just don't like it. Ever since the whole Alicia Fox stuff, it's just like I can't get that out of my head. I was like, he just, he looks like a weirdo that would kind of like be into voyeurism. So, uh, to answer your first question, Kyle, uh, FTR's balls got choked simultaneously, uh, both of them at the same time. Uh, by one man with very large hands for their very large balls. Um, exactly. I will say I did enjoy seeing Lash Legend. And Jakara Jackson? Yeah. Ooh. I will I like, there. there's nothing about Chase U uh, going on that I'm like, I'll suffer through that just to see this, but I'll suffer through 30 seconds of Noam Dar for that. So. Noam Dar's got a type. That's yeah. what I was thinking too the entire time. Like this motherfucker has a type. He does. He, oh, Katie, you guys have something in common. Um, I I'm gonna know, spit... crazy. <laughs> I'm gonna spit Sammy. Don't be that uh... surprised. I'm gonna spit Sammy Guevara <laughs> and whatever the fuck's going on with him, where he was with MJF and now he's like buddy buddy with the other two pillars because he respects them. The fact that his entrance Tron it resembles DBZ because. I hate when people I don't like like things that I like. Same. You understand what I'm saying? Like when you meet someone, you're like, I just really don't fucking like that person. And you find out they're into the same shit you are. And it just like, pisses you off. Yeah. yeah. Like, because why? Uh, and the fact that he had a squash match. Because, like, what the fuck does Sammy need a squash match for? Yeah. I, yeah. That's, I literally wrote Sammy squash, like, as a spit. Because, like, like, the other two actually had, like, legit matches. Yeah, yeah Darby's was a tag, tag match. match, but like Darby saw like an actual match, and Jungle Boy and Big Time Rush had like a nice match. So why the fuck is Sammy getting this? Nobody like, uh, yeah, they were in Texas, and like Sammy's from Texas, so they were like, all right, Sammy, you can go out there, and then you can talk because you'll get a good reaction because you're from Texas. And he did but, it. Like, uh, yeah, usually. That's how it would go. But, like, the crowd doesn't know what to do with Sammy. They're like, no, we don't like you, but, like, we also really can't stand MJF, so, like, we kind of cheer for you, I guess. The crowd is just as confused as they are with Sammy's character. Yes, Matt. So I played the clip back of the discussion we had about my wife and MJF for her this morning, and uh, <laughs> she didn't know that he was Jewish, and then when she found out that he was Jewish, she goes, up. Oh, that's just another thing I like about him. I'm like, <laughs> I will fuck him up. All right. No, okay. Listen. So I'm like completely lost. And this probably happens because I don't really watch the show on a weekly basis. But prior to this, there was a tournament to establish who would face MJF. Mm -hmm. Now it's a fatal forward match. Before, mm -hmm. it was everybody versus everyone. Then MJF and Sammy were besties in the Tessie and just stealing Will and I's gimmick on national television. Then now he doesn't like MJF as well, and he's, like, on the side with the pillars, and, like, we respect each other type of thing. And I'm just fucking lost. I... Like, was this actually explained, or am, am I just, like, is, is it because I'm not watching weekly to week well, basis? Well, he... You, okay, so... Yes, there was that tournament to determine who would face MJF. Sammy won with the help of Max. That's how they became, they became besties. Um, then it became like this whole thing where it was a tag match because Darby and Jungle Boy were pissed. If Jungle Boy and Darby won, they would get added and it'd be a fatal four way. Max being Max, shenanigans. Sammy turns on Max, they lose. 
fiddle four way things, 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 things. Oh, so Sammy's fickle, and so is MJF, and they're I not good friends. Fickle. They're fickle because he's like, oh, we're besties, and then they couldn't get along in one tag match, and now they they're like, fuck you, fuck that guy. Imagine if me and Matt didn't get along for one podcast, and we're like, yeah, fuck that guy. We're like the opening segment of a podcast, and then yeah, you know. weird. Yeah, they need to just go ahead and make up and just like Seriously. playing kinky. They should late fuck. Yeah, they should fuck. They Sammy, they, I mean, they kissed on the lips, so like, they did, what they did? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> when? When was this? <laughs> Why the fuck was that not a thumbnail? Because <laughs> it was very brief, and like you like because to go Chris in, like, Jericho deep covered and cum beats anything else. This also wasn't this week. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm going to swallow something that Katie should have had in news and rumors, but she didn't. Um, I'm going to swallow the fact that we are getting an OnlyFans slash fan time collaboration between Paige Van Zant and Mandy Rose. And I will tell you right now, ladies and gentlemen, I support sex work and they will be getting my money. Well, because I got to see that. Well, at least, at least they'll have your money. Is Paige Van Zant still employed by AEW? Yes. She is still on the roster. Mandy, go Possibly to AEW. Go to AEW. Come AW on down. Because Paige Van Zant does some dirty shit on her OnlyFans. Not her OnlyFans. I'm like 90% I mean, Are you subscribed? Sure. Yeah. I subscribed as soon as I heard there was a collab coming. <laughs> I support sex work, Vince. Number one podcast on Pornhub. Who else would I be? Yeah, yeah. Living the gimmick. Hell yeah. I got a DM the other day. It said, uh, looking into my pussy while I suck my husband's dick. And I'm like, what the fuck? Is <laughs> it? Okay. All right. I didn't pay for it. I did not pay for that one. I was holding out. But I saw it and I was curious. Stupid. <laughs> Straight up what it said. That's not surprising. So, yeah, swallowing that should have been in News and Rumors, but we didn't get there, so we got here. News and Rumors took longer than it needed to. It became, like, fucking she lead over here. Listen, that was 50% my fault, 50% your fault, so. Fuck was it my fault? And none brought it up. (laughs) Because it happened. Exactly. You should have known that I am easily triggered by things like that. Okay, well... You know what my triggers well, then... are. <laughs> I'm just what trying to figure out if fucking Paige Van Zandt is still on the goddamn roster. They have like 8,000 men on the roster, so hold on. Oh, wait, yeah. Oh, well, Katie's looking that up, Vince Spitter Swallow. I'm gonna swallow... <laughs> what am I gonna swallow? I know I'm going back to... I'm going over to Samantha because there was a few things here. Night, Allison. Thank Good you. Good night, Amazon. Buenas noches. Um, you know what? I'm gonna swallow the little blunt line continuous a uh, continuous tension. Uh, because you know, Roman came out and call and he was gonna call out KO and Sammy, but they came out without like being introduced, so that was a little rude. They go back and forth. The miscommunication of the Usos jumping KO and Sammy and Roman just being pissed about it. And then they go to the backstage area and they have the segment back. And Jimmy and Jada was like, what, what's the issue? You know, we jumped them. We we did what we we're going to do. We're taking care of the problem. And he's like, no, I had things I needed to say. I had shit I needed to get off my chest. I wanted to vent in the ring a little bit because I wasted a lot of time with fucking Sami Zayn. But you got what you wanted, so you don't give a fuck about my needs. You only care about your needs. So... I appreciate that Roman vented and expressed to the Usos that his needs are not being met by them and that they only care about their own. So, so I, I, you, you missed a crucial part in that. Which is what I was about to say. Go ahead. I appreciate the fact that Roman clearly is afraid of Solo Sokoa and <laughs> bitched the fuck out in the middle of the ring when he shoulder bumped him. Uh, because I have been saying... Since day one, and it is on Ish. record, Solo Sokoa, I did not want him in the bloodline because he is Solo Sokoa. He was abandoned by his family. He is not an Uso. He was not claimed. Then he got brought into the bloodline, and I said, I need this to be a ploy of him just getting revenge on his family, and we could be going there. 
Solo could be the one to dethrone Roman because Solo seems to be the to only one. Him. Don't rain on my goddamn parade. You just sit there and be happy for me. Solo <laughs> is clearly, clearly the only person in WWE that Roman's like, yeah, I don't want to fuck with him for sure. Seth Rollins is in there. It's in that category. No. He doesn't want to fuck with Seth Rollins because he hasn't beaten don't, Seth Rollins. I don't think that Roman would shoulder bump Seth Rollins and then look at Seth and be like, my bad. And then, and then no, Solo in that backstage segment, Mans usually doesn't blink, but like daggers, no blinking. Right into the back of Roman's head. I want to see I, Roman get spiked so hard. It's probably going to happen on Saturday. And he's still Actually. undefeated, by the way. Just putting that out there. Cool. Solo? Yeah, in singles. No. He lost to Cody on the go-home Raw before. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. Fuck, I forgot about that. Well, that doesn't count. Cody beats everybody. Um, <laughs> except, except Roman. Except Roman. When, uh, in a fair fight, Cody beats everybody. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's that was in the fair fight. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Swallowing the continuous <clears throat> tension and, you know, Roman acknowledging his needs. They're not being met. Roman yeah. being a little bitch because, you know, Soul beat his ass. Also, shout out to KO just for always being ready to fucking fight somebody in every situation. <laughs> I, like, I aspire to be Kevin Owens. Let's show it. Kevin's like, no, I'll fuck you up right now. Let's go. KO has I, no chill. I am Kevin Owens in that situation. I am 100% Kevin Owens. I'm more of a Sammy. I'm, I'm, I'm over here be like, come on, Katie. No, no, no. Let, let, let's slow um, our no. here. Hands are getting thrown. Let's fucking go. <laughs> We'll throw throw luggage while you're at it. The Bucks did it. You can too. I'll throw whatever. I'll throw the fucking mic. They got the Chicago takeover chair right there. I'll just throw it like in that episode of the Boondocks and just start a riot. If you guys ever watched that episode of the Boondocks. I watched Rampage. Why? Did you? I did. Oh, yeah. because I, I was going to be on at 630. No, I, no, I did. I actually uh, happened to catch that part. And I was like, oh, all right, wow. now that I actually caught it and I know when it's going to be on, I'm going to tune in. Wow. Um, and there was only one thing on the entire show that I gave a fuck about. I am swallowing okay. the fact that Taya Valkyrie returned, uh, came down, interrupted Jade Cargill's like three match open challenge, knocked some local talent on her ass and beat the shit out of Jade Cargill and is giving me the tiniest bit of hope that this god awful TBS title reign is possibly coming to an end because she can use her finisher in the match coming up at double or nothing against Jade. I'm going to be honest. I came home from work, took a little nap because I was exhausted. So I woke back up and I was like, oh, it's seven o'clock. <laughs> I'm not watching the last half hour Rampage. <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> Usually I'm all team Rampage. It's been a long fucking week. <laughs> yeah, no, I was uh, I was stuck at work because my coworker called in sick two hours before <laughs> she was supposed to clock in, so I had to pull a double. Uh, so I missed all of it. Um, but you know what? I'll swallow if Jade takes that L eventually because it it, it, it needs to end at this point. It needs to be over. I mean, it's I, I love so, Jade it's Curry, absurd. It's time. <laughs> it's so time. It's been time. Uh, and they're just padding her record now. Like she's just beating local yeah. jobbers, and like, you're like, "Oh, 58. Oh, 59. How about 60?" And then another one comes out. And then Ty's music hits, and Ty is just like, I-, "I got this." And then the girl's like, "No, no, no, I got this." And she just pops her in the fucking face, just knocks this poor local talent out, marches down to the ring, starts whooping Jade's ass, gets her up, hits the finisher. Commentary's going on. Challenge her to do a match double or nothing. Commentary's like, oh, she'll get to use what a, the fucking Rise to Valhalla or whatever the fuck her finisher is called because her last name's Valkyrie. Something like that. Yeah, what is the name of it? Oh my God, it's going to fall on Something about Valhalla, but not the one with the stinky feet on SmackDown. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, swallowing that. Is, wherever the fuck she's at. I don't know. They're what fucking brand split she's in WWE? Katie Spit or Swallow? Uh, I'm going to swallow Pretty Deadly. Yes, boy. Getting the win over the Brawling Brutes. I, I'm i team Pretty Deadly now. Why? Because they're your tag team champions? Well, not only that, but like I love Pretty Deadly. The It's it's just everything about them. I'm down. It's very 
you know, energy. So, <laughs> yeah. And that's the same. So, the fact that they he like put himself back in the ropes to act like he didn't just help win the match genius very eddie guerrero style like acting like he didn't do shit and i kind of like the fact that you know it's a good first feud to pretty deadly on the main roster and i mean it's the brawling brutes who had no pun intended a banger last year running yeah. through like imperium and all the stuff we got with that like this, this is a good start. Well. I'm mean, not the Usos, the New Day. They, they had a, yeah. a few feuds with the New Day as well. Um, yeah, no, I'm with you. Uh, pretty deadly. I've I was slowly warming up to them uh, in in NXT, especially when they were they were hosting and they did the uh, the Santa Claus like list thing type of uh, skit or segment or whatever. It was it was all good stuff. And tonight on SmackDown, they. Fit like a glove. They felt like they belong in main roster. They felt like they've been on main roster for a few years and just had that savvy veteran know how and just comfort in front of the camera. They're just perfect. They're going to be great on main roster. Of course, Pretty Kyle loves Pretty Deadly. Yes, boy. <laughs> They're fun. Yeah. Vince, Spitter Swallow. Uh, this might be my last one. Um, I'm going to go and four. Down, Jesus. Uh, uh, I'm gonna swallow the fact that uh, I'm gonna swallow the main event because we got uh, the Usos versus LWO, <laughs> and LWO picked up a win here. Uh, granted, it was because of interference in the distraction via KO and Sammy, but nonetheless, they still got the victory here, and it helps progress the tension between the Usos and the rest of the bloodline. And Michael Cole said it best. They they can't seem to do anything right lately, and they just keep messing up. And they took that L. Um, but you know what? Maybe if they had some support from the rest of the bloodline, they might not have been distracted by KO and Sammy. You don't get to play both sides of the fence here. You can't swallow Roman venting his frustration because they keep fucking up, and then blame Roman for not having their back as to why they're fucking. <laughs> up. I'm not blaming Roman. I'm just saying at least that's Paul the rest Amy of the bloodline. Paul Heyman, Solo could be there. Roman never comes out for matches. Paul so had their ex- back. Paul came out and chatted him up and was all nice to him and shit. And Solo has and- Solo has stopped accompanying them to matches, and ever since then, that's where and under whose stuff. orders was that? Solo does what Solo wants. No, so uh, no, he not does doing, not. He does what he is told, which is why when he turns out Roman, it's gonna be fucking fantastic. That's he that's gonna be Michael. from the ancestors. Yeah, but no, yeah, like. The match was good. It was great. It was really good wrestling. Solid main events. It made it made sense, honestly, to me. And yeah, so it was good stuff. LWO picked up a win. How can I not swallow that? You brought up Michael Cole. Uh, and that leads into my next spit. I'm spitting the fact. I don't remember in the group chat what I said. Team Firecrotch's finisher should be. However, I'm spitting the fact that when Michael Cole described their finisher, he called it a gory... Bomb, bomb Russian, Russian leg, leg, sweep, leg sweep and that is not a fucking what Russian leg sweep all. Michael Cole you should know better also spitting along with that because it was in the match the fact that uh NXT talents Valentina Faraz and Ulisa Leon uh were treated like local talent were not acknowledged oh that's what they were hired. I didn't even notice because I yeah. wasn't watching the match because I was exactly playing you, it while I was driving you so I, know I couldn't the way the that they treat them yeah because they didn't yeah. They said their names. They didn't say NXT talent. They didn't say that you know, none of that shit. They treated them like local jobbers. And uh, no, that's fucking disrespectful. Also, still it spending really the fact, I'm, sp- the, I'm also spending the fact, and so double down there and snowball your spit. Uh, the fact that uh, Team Firecrotch are still NXT Women's Champions on the main roster while the women, the, the women's champions are still like wearing the other brands main women's title Can belt talk about this? i know i know but it, like we didn't talk about like the nxt women's like to add on to that it's like it's just more and more nonsense with the women's title division it's all spit uh, th- i mean this was also the fact that this was uh this was first match in nine months because she was injured yeah and they did that that's mm-hmm. that's heartbreaking because i like the two of them they're cool i they're like fun them. Latino stand up. 
That's also because they're the main roster got all of the tag teams basically from the women's division in NXT. Valentina had that cute little thing going on with Electra for a little while, like yeah, and then she turned on her with some brass knocks. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Some she good shit. Bust them out during this match. I'm with you, Vince. Spitting everything women's titles in WWE. Period. All of it. Everything. Yeah, it's a mess. Uh, Katie, spit or swallow. Uh, this is my last one because it's kind of just like a it's a bunch of things kind of roll up in the one because a lot of things were mentioned. I'm swallowing the main event of Monday Night Raw. Uh, Judgment Day getting a win because of interference from Imperium, and I actually like the fact that that's three solid teams, solid loosely, but like Judgment Day is being built strong with all four members actually doing something. Dom's just there at this point. He's just Rhea's luggage. What? I also want to add the fact that I love the fact that Finn Balor was like admiring JD McDonough from afar. I don't care about JD McDonough, but but I they could make me like him if they make him join uh, Judgment Day and he's another member and then now he's like that singles guy while Damian no, and Dom are the no. tag team. I don't want bobblehead. He fits though. He head. fit. No. He fits, and it makes sense. I don't him want being him Finn's there. protege. I'm I'm for it. I don't care. I'm with it. I'm all on board. But anyways, before I so interrupted, uh, that like Judgment Day is being built. Ko and Sammy having to deal with all of this bullshit because they apparently have no other friends besides two of them. And Imperium getting involved because all of the shit the past two weeks with them and Ko and Sammy and Gunther. I liked the fact that it's kind of just like Ko and Sammy versus the world right now. So as it should be, honestly, like, and it should lead into like them having to def- have multiple title defenses on SmackDown and Raw. And sh- this is why the only thing I don't like about like Roman and Solo challenging for the tag titles, both of them collectively, is that I was hoping that after the brand split and after WrestleMania, once Kale and Sammy had the titles, they would defend them individually so that SmackDown got their own titles and Raw had their own titles. Because you have tag teams that aren't being used, like Los Lotharios, who are great wrestlers and just aren't getting used. You have LWO that aren't getting used. You have uh, the Brawling Brutes, who should be in tag title competition. Uh, aside, and then you have the Street Profits, who haven't really had a fucking tag title since the Usos been champions. And it's like, it's crime that they're not champions. So like, what are you going to do with the Uso, uh, with the Street Profits? You know? Split up the titles, please. I'm going to do what uh, Vince is incapable of doing and wrap this all up. Uh, <laughs> so my, my final two um are swallows and they they kind of tie together so i'm just gonna swallow people i don't like getting dropped on smackdown boogs got dropped by la knight because fuck rick boogs and that whole gimmick i hate it and uh theory got dropped by sheamus sheamus just came out didn't even say a word and dropped his bitch ass. yeah i was gonna i loved it so boogs and theory getting dropped on smackdown big swallow for me vince did you write down that title i told you to write down which one thank you sir might have another or there another one we got our uh, we got our rocks off i don't know I i'm pretty was sure one. the thank you sir may have another was the one you wanted him to write down i also put spit in my face and then i can't remember what the original one you had i can't recall whatsoever what oh brand. that was uh what brand split yeah what brand split? yeah yeah but no yeah, forget that no. that doesn't fit uh, i think thank you so much may I have another should be the title thank you sir may I have another okay yeah. <laughs> Katie, favorite show of the week since you asked me every week if we're going to do it because I always forget and I didn't forget this week. Proud of you. Yeah, so proud of you. Um... <laughs> and now you're on the spot and you don't have an answer. Uh, fuck it. I'll go SmackDown, I guess. I don't know. Vince? I'm going to go with Raw. It had a little bit of everything. I enjoyed some things. So, uh, Ladies and gentlemen, best show of the week, as per the Smack and Raw podcast, AEW Dynamite. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that was my uh, second I'm gonna go <laughs> I'm going to go Dynamite. Um, it's my third. WWE, I don't know. Like There are things 
but I think the overall hate that I have for <laughs> everything <laughs> that's going on aesthetically uh, is really taking me out of the product, and the fact that NXT outside the women's division just isn't doing it for me. I'm having. Um, I've really been enjoying. Vu, by the way, I'm really enjoying AEW, and uh, also Collision's coming. The CM Punk show with everyone that I want to watch, and I'm super excited for that. So, uh, yeah, AEW Dynamite. As a matter of fact, words you will never hear after Collision debuts is so. I watched Rampage tonight. Not gonna fucking happen. So that that's a thing. Um, Vince, yes, you never sent me your address. So uh, why don't you tell everybody where they can find you? And then when Katie's telling everyone where they can find her, you can text me where I can find you. Okay. Uh, well, you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at SES Vince. The link train my bio to everything straight talk, catch up podcast, smacking the raw and creation world. So hit the links there. If you want to search specifically straight talk, we did a new NBA draft lottery podcast where we also talked about game one of the West finals between the Lakers and the Nuggets. So if you want more basketball content, just search up SES Vince in your favorite podcast platform. Find it the easiest way possible. Also, Latest Get Show just dropped on Wednesday as well. So plug in that as well. So search and look up the Get Show podcast, link tree slash Get Show podcast. Get all the links there. We had a fun time. We did wrestlers cast in all of that sketches. I was a proponent for <clears throat> Maurice being Pierre Escargo and doing French phrases in a bubble bath with nothing but a raincoat. Sorry, my throat is just... I'm, I'm still feeling I'll sick. I'll fix it later. You're good. Yeah. But yeah, so yeah, Get Your Podcast, Trade Talk, both dropped. I'm going to be recording a tag team title tournament with Katie this weekend, so that should be dropping Saturday, if not Sunday. Uh, and then the following week, I'll be doing a AEW brand split with Katie, and maybe Matt wants to partake in that episode <laughs> in some way, shape, or form. So we'll be doing that. So when are you doing that? Next week, Saturday? Well, we'll see. I actually have this weekend off, but mm. uh, my dad's should busy we, this weekend. Should we so. switch it? We could do well, the AEW brand split tomorrow. I was going to say, do the Sunday, tag. I'm doing uh, with Travis that thing. And then, I don't that know. Thing. Uh, well, when Sunday, I get up, I'm I'll not talk available. To I was going to say, when I, I get up. Do anything. When I get up tomorrow, I'll talk to Kate and see what we have going on. I'll let you guys know if you guys are free and you want to do something, we'll work it out. But um, Noon Eastern Time, 11, 11 a.m. Central Standard Time is when we're going to meet up. Uh, it won't be live. It won't be live. It'll be pre-recorded. I'll have to find out what I got going on tomorrow. I think we got some shit to do. Uh, Your people can text my house. people. Um, I, still waiting <laughs> for you to drop a pin, Vince. Uh, Katie, <laughs> as the skeleton gropes you, uh, where can they find you? Uh, before I get into that, I think I might know what your announcement is. I might be wrong, but I'll I want to see if I'm right after the fact. Um, but you can follow me on Twitter at KDRSN13, the link tree of my bio to take all things Shilly Showcase, twitch.tv slash Shilly Showcase, typically Thursday, 6 p.m. Eastern, youtube.com slash Shilly Showcase, watch a video because they're way more entertaining. Anchor, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, if you want to listen. In uh, Inside the Mind of interview series, you guys want a new one in like a month. I don't want to talk about it. I'm stressing. It's fine. But whilst I was stressing, I finished Fight Forever Wrestling Soulmates Part 3. Shut out. Shut out. I really sat. I barely watched yeah. Dynamite, to be honest. My TV's behind me. I kind of just sat here. No headphones. I was listening to Dynamite mainly. Knock that shit out. So if you want to learn more about the history of KO and Sammy, Becky and Charlotte, Omega and Okada, because somebody asked for it, Ooh. not Savannah. It was just people on Twitter asked. Uh, and then Taker and HBK. That's a good Matt. one. Taker and Kane uh, could have been one. Listen, I just went with what the people wanted. Uh, that's there. That's in the link tree. You can you can find it. Read it. I don't know if you please. want me to read Give that. Give me feedback. I mean, I, oh, okay. No, I want feedback. Please. Okay. You guys can follow me on Twitter only at my Rose and TTRIDDR or at Getting Off for horror content. Uh, also, please go support It's Creation World, I T S C R E A T I A World uh, on all social medias and creationworld.com uh, and facebook.com slash creation world. Uh, because without Creation World, there is no smack and raw, there is no getting off, there is no spit or swallow. 
Uh, there is no major announcement next week that you guys should tune in for. So, <laughs> for SES Vince, Danny Delgado, the Pornhub Poppy, the Sultan of Spitter Swallow, and Miss Katie Kinsey Bay Bay, I am the Patron State of Podcast and the Warden Mad Ritter, and this has been your number one wrestling podcast on Pornhub. Number one. Go touch grass, guys.